All right, welcome. My name's Brad. I'm Mike, and this we're going to introduce Nearpods. Um, we're going to show you how it works from both ends, the student side and the teacher side. So we first want to start this actually with the probably the simplest way to make a Nearpod presentation is you want to download this add-on for Nearpod. Now you can make these presentations in Nearpod, um, but I don't know about you, Mike, but I, I think it's much easier in Google Slides. What could, in your opinion, what's a benefit of doing it in Google Slides other than uh, think, the easiness? I think it's just familiarity because okay. it's like we're all familiar with Google Slides and Nearpod. And I think when you open it with Nearpod, it just sends you to Google Slides. So, you know, cool. it, it's just, you know, if it's a, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. There you go. Excellent. Yeah. So I think too, like we have this, so we got this add on here and, and essentially you can use this to create any type of Nearpod power that you'll see in the presentation and then it'll just add it on. But what we're going to do is actually get this going. So if you click down to this button here, save and go to Nearpod, this is where you'll actually be able to start it. Not in Google slides. You do have to start it in Nearpod. This is where all the cool tricks come in. So you have the option of doing a student paced presentation and so the students can go through the little tricks that you set up to them uh, up for them but today we're going to do the live participation yeah that way you can you you control the pace of the of the presentation rather than some of the students flying through it like i got this we're going to go through this and everything yeah. like that you can go through it you can um, dictate the pace to everything awesome so now, now we're here and basically students have the option of going to join.nearpod.com or you can actually send them the link. I don't know about you, Mike, but I've been just sending the link in the chats and then they join that way. But I think I'm going to do join.nearpod right now. What about you? Also, you know, it's a lot harder for the kids to um, try and join. I'm joining with my phone right now and, right. you know, typing in the code, typing in the web page and the code, you know, could take could be some cumbersome. We all have Google Classroom now, so it's just sending the link through Google Classroom is way easier. Uh, that's, that's a good idea. Google Classroom is a good way to do that. Yeah, I know a lot of teachers at, at our school too do remind. I suppose that's another way to do it. That is. Okay, so what Mikey and I are doing right now is we're just kind of adding this to our phone because we want to simulate what it looks like as a student um, also, so right now I'm just like joining the game. And so as the educator on the computer, I'm wondering, uh, do you need this code, Mike? Are you good? You got what you uh, need? I, I think can wait. I am good. Okay. And if I go to the presentation, you can see down here actually the number of students. Okay, so we got Brad and we got Mikey. So we're good to go. Okay, we got our class. And um, Mikey, tell us a little bit about what you're seeing on your phone. So on my end, I'm going to see the slide, like pretty much what the slide is. I can't move the screen at all and everything like that. Right now I have Nearpod engagement tools. So, you know, now we're just going to wait for the teacher to start the presentation. Okay, excellent. And that's, that's a key point too. You know, students cannot go ahead. And that would be if you want the students to be able to work at their own pace, that's where you do the student pace. Awesome. So let's dive in. One, one more tool actually is you can hide student names. You can show student names. That'll play a role when we do uh, the different like tricks and things like that. And then you can also quickly kind of navigate, but we're just going to go one by one. Yeah. The first one, we're your guides. <laughs> All right, Mikey, tell us a little bit about this one. Yeah. So this is basically a draw tool. Um, basically the students can draw and uh, recognize a lot of science people like to use it, like either drawing mitosis, cell, cell, uh, cell reproductions and stuff like that. Or it could be um, something from history, drawing, drawing a battle or talking about constitutions and anything like that. Okay, great. So let's actually see. Okay. So our ability to draw, as you can see the student side, you can see there's a bunch of draw tools on here. You can draw a schematic. Um, as you can see in real time, someone will be able to see what's going on. And then if I hit submit, what's going to happen is on the teacher side, you're going to be able to see what students have already drawn. As you can see, two students have drawn. It. You can comment on them. You can kind of tell them, oh, this is great. This isn't, you know, kind of like reinforce it. You can see the yep. student stuff. You can do everything. Why don't you hit the share button? Great. So the share button actually shows every student that's looking at the slide what you think a modeled um, an 
answer would be. So if you're looking at an answer that um, that like majority of the kids didn't get correct and a certain couple of kids did, you can actually share the modeled the modeled um, situation, which is great. That's pretty cool. So let's let's do unshare here. Yeah. And another thing too that you can show is so for example, I have no idea. I would have no idea how to answer this. And and granted, it does show my name. Maybe you want to get rid of that. So you can hide student name. But you can use this as an example to say, uh, not quite, not quite. And, and you can kind of correct it in real time, or you can go back later and see, okay, who did really understand what I was teaching? Yeah, exactly. Cool. All right. Moving on. Okay, so this one has a video, and then you can decide, do you want this to play on all the devices, or do you just want it to play on the computer? We're going to play it just on the computer for now. And actually what I am going to show you, so um, it'll say paused on the, on the student side. This is actually a lecture video that I recorded with Screencastify. And so I'm just going to play just a short clip so we can hear it. Okay. And I don't know if it's coming through on the sound, but this, this here, um, you know, again, just trying to show video, but I would always recommend following it up with some sort of question. All right, so you always, whenever you show a video, you're always gonna wanna put in um, a, a, some sort of assessment. So with here, it's just a very simple uh, sh short answer question. So I said, wow, that was a lot of information in that video. What ideas do you remember? And so Mikey, right now, as students, we're trying to figure out um, you know, just a couple of ideas. So, I mean, I'll just put a couple of things in here. Yeah. So as you can see, if you take a look, we have a little box, the kids can type in it. I mean, if they have a computer, it's a lot easier. Um, so if I type in, I did not remember. Yeah. And then I know another thing too, is depending on how you set up your slides, if you want the students to be able to record an audio, uh, file they could do that too yeah so as you can see we um i'm even updating mine too there you go okay we got got 100 percent. okay so i mean that's the thing is as a teacher you may not actually have the students remember everything that you you taught and mikey unfortunately did not remember anything um i would recommend hiding names yeah go ahead what are you gonna say yeah, so as you can see, like, as you can see, like, the students will start um, seeing each other's answers, especially on the on the board or the or the projector of the teacher. So hiding names would be very, very helpful here, where as you can see, um, students can be, um, you can re uh, reteach everything to them, or you can share what the modeled answer would be. And then you just go on from there. Listen, this is the Constitution. You know, these are the these are the founding laws of what we um, as Americans do and everything like that. So cool. Yeah. And I would say too, just remember, you can always check the names at the end. You can always check the data um, at the end to see how how well the students were doing throughout that. OK, yeah. Cork board, collaborative board. So with this one, let's see. And, and you have this option. I would recommend. Yes, you approve before students post. So what types of pollution out there? And uh, I'm gonna try and post something up here. Uh, so let's see, hopefully this collaboration board is- Right, so yeah, so it's saying, okay, come up. So like this this student, this is actually me, they said, this is a bad word, right? So they put something bad, you can say, no, sorry, you're not allowed to put that up. So I have to try again. Yeah, and sometimes, you know, as you can see on, the, on my cork board is the fact that I had a I had something that said that it wasn't approved by the teacher yet. Uh, you can always refresh, and that's the great thing about Google Slides is the fact that when the teacher is pacing themselves, you can just refresh, and it'll go right into what the slide's going to do. You know? Awesome. And I would say too, virtually, I have some students. You know, if if they are unable to post or whatever reason they can't get this to work, they can send something in the chat and I could even post it for them in that you right. know, minute they have internet issues, which exactly. does happen. Okay, so it looks like Mikey has got one here. Okay, very good, we'll approve this. And I love that you did a picture, that's right. Excellent. So, so as you can see, we can post pictures, you can post thoughts, um, anything on this core board. It's almost like Jamboard in a way. So, um, so it just collaborates everyone into one, 
official thought rather than typing it out. Someone can actually post visual cues on this one. Yeah. And I think as a student, right, you can like different people's posts oh, yeah. totally. too. And that engagement, I think, is really, uh, I mean, our, my students love it. I know yours do too. So yeah, let's see. Yeah. Let's keep it going. Keep it going. Now, again, you would unlikely have all of these different powers in one slide, but really just to kind of show the different things you can do. Yeah. Um, this one, if you do have VR technology, you can set this one up this way. This is in front of Independence Hall in Philadelphia. And the way I use this is I kind of tell a little story, right? Hottest summer in 1787, not a lot of compromises. The summer cools down, the compromises come. But just getting aware of what, what's going on, what does it look like around these different places, trying to bring things to life. And so that's kind of fun. And then you give them like a little question, right? And so they, they try and answer kind of what you've been talking about while also getting to explore. Um, yeah, something like that. Okay, so sending in a response. Yeah, sending in the response. So this is always great to give a kids a voice. You know, <laughs> kids love to express their opinions, but they could also be um, shy about it when uh, calling on someone and everyone's watching them and then they have to speak. Uh, kids, lo uh, kids love to write down their opinions, you know. It's a great way of having this kind of online identity as of right now, you know, and it's kind of – it's it, it, it's nice to see everyone making a comment and you get to see how people think about how you all your students think about it rather than just calling on a few. I agree. Very good. So continuing on, got a few more tricks, a few more tricks to show. Um, tell us about this one, Mikey. Yeah. So this one's a fill in the blank. Obviously I just put a generic question on there. It's more of a seeing what, um, what goes into it. Geometry is the study of techniques, the study of shapes. But um, as you can see, you can have multiple boxes um, on here. The students will see the boxes on there. You just drag and drop into it, which is great. Um, you just basically, it's basically fill in the blank and stuff. And stuff. So it can kind of show you like, oh, do the kids uh, understand what the vocabulary words are? A lot of it, this is vocabulary building, I feel like. So if there are words... And, uh, voca and definitions that um, are difficult, this is one good way to kind of like show the mastery of the skills. There you go. I love that you put angels here. I do that too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you see the kids and you'd be like, are the kids paying attention? Is that angels or angles, you know? Yep. Very good. Right. And then this one is cool too. Talk to us about how we would do this one. I think it's Yeah, so uh polling. So, you know, you get to polling some questions, you know, we all want to know what the kids think is the biggest and the uh, um biggest and the uh, baddest over here. So, we're talking about vitamin C. What fruits is more has has more vitamin C? You can go through the poll of you having all this, you can go guava and kind of check off like which one do you think has the most and then as you can see the results i'm shared i'm sharing results yeah. here. what is uh, what has more fruit and we can see 50 percent has guava 50 percent hasn't answered yet so. and i don't know about you mike but this is my favorite part is the share unshare thing to be able to change it dynamically on the screen oh yeah um because what we're presenting here is not necessarily it's not what they're seeing on their phone so it's good to be able to show yep. some of the results there I yeah agree. All right. And then our next one is more of a simulation. Yeah, this is definitely out of my wheelhouse. What do we got here? So this is a simulation where you can draw um, certain shapes. Um, you can drag into it and you can kind of see where it is. Like if you go ask the students, okay, make this, la make this laser bend to the bottom right hand corner. And on the bottom, you see a bunch of little lenses and the lenses will deflect uh, where the la laser is going to go. As you can see, you do the simulations and uh, you kind of like go where uh, where you want it to be, how you want it um, pointing at. You give them a specific direction. You give them kind of like a way to work on this. And then here's where people are going to show. You want to show uh, people's uh, answers at this point? Yeah. How do I? I wonder if it's not showing me how. Let's see. Probably not. Is it under the student? Nope. Yeah, I tried that. Interesting. Oh, I yeah. know I can it see it on my phone. Yeah. But so, uh, so this one looks like it. it is uh, something that only the students can see. 
as you can see, um, the students just play around with it. It's like, oh, I figured it out. And then you kind of have an open-ended question at the end. Um, mm -hmm. You could tie this in with a polling or open-ended questions like, which one gave you the best results? Which one bent yep. the light the most and everything like that? And I think that's good for us to know too, that you can actually share this one despite our love of sharing the other responses too. Yeah. So I agree, yeah. open-ended question, some sort of question, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, excellent. Yeah, another, as far as uh, multiple choice, Right. This is great too, even just to check for understanding. Um, and I know, you know, this, so I'll just put in an answer. Yeah. And it'll demonstrate correct versus incorrect. Um, and then you can, you can look later. And I think just having more visual representation of things and to be able to change things up, um, I think is good, good for the yeah. students. Yeah, it's definitely good for the students, especially when you have so many things. Uh, you don't want to just have a bunch of multiple choices. You want to kind of mix it up. You know, keep the kids on their toes and everything. Very good. All right. I think we're getting close to, okay, so this this one, oh, we're almost close to uh, race to the finish here. Yeah. But as far as the matching, um, I don't, here, we can actually view the pairs on the computer. Yeah, you can view the pairs as the teachers, then, so you can kind of like direct them to where it is. As you can see on the teacher, on the kid's side, when they click on two things, it'll turn red if it's not the correct yeah. matching. Um, if it is, it'll turn green and it'll stop and they'll like um, disable it. And then you just keep going. Uh, there you go. And you can see class results and yeah. then view pairs, more like an answer key. More like yeah. an answer key. And then yep. you guys can talk about it, discussions. Yeah, that's a great way to match things up. I like this one. And even though I teach AP students, it's, it's a good one because again, a lot of these tricks are just formative assessment to make sure the students are paying attention. Right. Okay. And I, well, and I guess as equally important to collect the data too for later. Okay. My favorite part, I, I usually will end at least longer presentations with time to climb. Um, yeah. What did I call it? Like race, race to the finish? I don't know. Okay. So let's see. So the students will get to pick a character. Um, okay, so I'm gonna be, I like being the penguin. Yeah, yeah and I'll be, I'll be the little turtle. Okay, great. <laughs> yeah, anything you can use as gamification. I'm, I'm a huge fan. Gamification is one of the best tools I feel like in my classroom because the kids love to get competitive in some way, shape or form. There will be the shy ones that don't want to, but deep down, I feel like they do. Yep. I guess I was, that was waiting on me. Okay, so we're good to go. We got our characters. Yep. And this is just kind of like a Kahoot quiz, I suppose, but um, there's a lot of, lot of visual. A lot of visual aspects. Okay, so the question, all right, the branch government that has the ability to declare war, and I made this one 50-50, legislative or executive. Oh, that. And uh, that's okay. I mean, really just trying to show, so I made it up there. Mikey oh. took forever, too bad, <laughs> too bad. <laughs> All right, after a long heat, okay. All right, so let's take a look. As you can see, um, it also tallies up who, who answers faster, so points right. matter. There on you there. go. See, we're climbing up there. And then one more we got. Okay, so founding father was the main architect. Ooh. Right, Ooh, and I think, that. yeah, we both got yeah. it, but I was much quicker, right? So that's, that's something too. And I wouldn't necessarily use this as like a full test review type of thing, but definitely as a review for your, for right. your presentation. Exactly. All right. And actually that is the end of our, our presentation. And at that point it will, it will save things automatically. And if I, I just go out, uh, you can resume this session later. Do you want to leave? Yes. And then you can always come back to it. Right. And I think that's kind of our, our travel through Nearpod, and we also have directions, written directions that will follow this as well. Thanks, Mike, for joining us. Oh, thank you for having me. It was great. It was fun. Uh, we got a lot of I got a lot of uh, information out of there. Hope you guys uh, learned a lot. So, That's great. Excellent. Yeah. Have a great day, everyone. All right. See ya.